So this is our third day, and what we need to do is, um, I don't want to start over. I don't want to start with a brand new empty WordPress site again. We did that on day one, we did that on day two. Well, on day three, we're not going to start over. And then on the next month, again, we're going to continue our project. So instead of restarting every time, I introduced a concept last time on instruction sheet number four, which was titled archiving WordPress with Duplicator. Uh, you'll see over and over that with anything related to technology, there's many ways to do the same thing. And so this is one of many ways to actually um, back up your site. There are some perhaps that are a bit more automated or full featured, but I think for, for this, for our tasks, this one accomplishes what I want. It's powerful, it's relatively simple to use once you get the hang of it. And so our duplicator plugin, it's literally called duplicator. Sometimes I don't like that these companies choose such generic names, like uh, pages and numbers and duplicator, and a bit too generic sometimes, word. Uh, I think it's more creative when they have a more interesting name, that way you can differentiate it. If you take my social media class, totally off topic, but if you take the social media class, we talk in there about the annoyance of having to deal with Facebook pages and Facebook profiles. And if you don't know the difference, you might say, what's the difference between a Facebook profile and a Facebook page? There's a big difference. But they just use the generic names that I, that I don't like. So Duplicator is the generic name for uh, one of the best plugins, I think, to make a backup, to make an archive of our site. Yes? You're getting ahead of us, so oh. let's wait a moment and see if uh, it makes sense after I kind of kind of set it up here. So previously we did the section of part one, archiving your site. Next we'll do resurrecting your site. So archiving your site assumes you have a site already. We installed a plugin. We make a copy of it, and we get two files, installer.php and a zip file. You don't, as I said last time, and I'll, and I'll mention it again, you don't really do anything with those two files until you're in this section of resurrecting your site. So you don't want to double-click the PHP file. You don't want to unzip the zip file. I'm going to show you what to do with it right now. Those two files contain a perfect copy of your site. And what's great about that is, uh, for real-world scenarios, people have asked me this already, thinking ahead, well, can I make a duplicator backup of my currently existing live site and work on it in WAMP? Yes, you can, and I highly recommend it. Because when you work with a site online, uh, out on the real internet in WordPress, people can see it and when you make changes, people will see those changes right away. So if you instead make a backup with Duplicator and work on it in WAMP, which is only available on your computer, make changes, find problems, fix the problems, then upload it to your site, your live site, I think that might be better, you might be better off. And this is the part about uploading it to your site. Now this really only applies to to our room here, and I want you to take notes when I mention it, but we will just need to change a couple of things here and there when you're ready to upload it to your GoDaddy or Bluehost and so forth. The concept will still work, but the details will be different. We're going to need your GoDaddy password. We're going to need your Bluehost file manager. It should make sense when I mention something here on localhost. Basically, you're going to be replacing your own server there, victorsbakery.com. We'll get to that. But this is what we're about to do to resurrect our site. And it would be nice if it was just a simple double click and it comes back to life. We still need to do a little bit of setup just to, re just to create a blank database. After that, then we'll resurrect the site and it comes back exactly as it was the last moment we used the site. We're not going to need to reinstall WordPress. We're not going to need to re-add our plugins or themes or posts or anything. That will be, that will be transferred over easily. But what we still need to do is just create a database together and bring the site back to life. So, the first thing, log into PHP My Admin. Okay, well that assumes what? How do you log into PHP My Admin? Let's say I'm not here to teach you step by step, you're at home. What's the first step to get into PHP My Admin? 
You need to go to localhost. Before you go to localhost, what do you need to do? Launch the WAMP server. Localhost only works when you've got WAMP server running. Your virtual localhost server only works when you've got the local virtual host server software running. So make sure you double click WAMP server first. <clears throat> double click WAMP server and you'll see on the bottom right corner the little W appears. Hopefully it'll go green eventually. Okay, I've got WAMP server. Now we can go to localhost. So open any web browser you like. Can you get Monster, Monster right or? Yeah, it's free software. You can download it for uh, for Windows. If you've got a Mac, you need MAMP server. If you go to your web browser, go to localhost. That confirms that your WAMP server is ready. You'll get the double. Okay, so my instructions. Go to PHP my admin. What's next? Create we create the database in PHP my admin, so your address is localhost slash PHP my admin. Yes. So I started doing this from my laptop in the last class. Mm -hmm. So I already have the WordPress data, right? So I don't need to create a new one. Sorry. In your case, then, you don't need to do anything at all because your site's ready to go. Thank you. All right, so once I'm in PHE, my admin at the top, you click on databases. We've done this at least twice before. Click on databases, and we're going to create a database. So you can call it anything we want, even kitty cat. But we're going to create one called WordPress and click Create. So once you've got the uh, WordPress database created, that is uh, step one and two. Question? Does that database have to be named after the same database you created once? Actually, no. No, at this point we could create a, a brand new database called Kitty Cat and it would work. The data, the data in the database in a sense doesn't care what the name of the database that it's in, but that's on our next steps to tell WordPress installer use this database. So it could be any database. Okay, so log into PHP my admin, create database, check. Create a new folder in your WAMP WW folder, new site for example. Notice I say for example, because jumping down here, localhost slash new site slash install. So any folder that's inside of your localhost folder is a brand new site. Well, I've got the site from last week ready for you. If you saved your files to your flash drive, you can use your files. But I have my files that we can use and that might be better for you just to just to get up and running. So what you should do is open your computer window on the top left. Let's go to the classroom data drive Z. We're going to scroll down to my folder campus ecom1. And there's a folder with last week's date. You want to copy that whole folder. You want to right-click copy. Not the stuff inside of it. I'm not saying go into the folder and copy that. I want the whole folder. The whole folder includes the files inside. So right-click copy that folder. And then we need to open another computer window so that we can go to the www folder. Where's, it that, where's that www folder again? in the C drive, so open computer again, open local disk, and then what? WAMP, yes, and then www. So in the local disk C, you'll scroll down and you'll see WAMP, and then in WAMP you'll see www, 
and then you can on the on the empty spot of the folder you want to right click and paste so I'm copying last week's work into the WAMP folder, the www folder, so that we can work on it today. <clears throat> so think about this, if this were your own server, your own GoDaddy, your own Bluehost. Uh, you've got Bluehost and most likely it has some sort of file manager, um, also known as FTP, and you need to upload your project to your server and then we can follow the next steps. So here it was a simply copying something from one folder to another on our computer. But when you've got your own GoDaddy, your own Bluehost, etc., you're uploading your folder to your server. All right, so that was number 3. Yes. Uh, which campus file is? Well, this class today is Campus e-commerce, so it would be the e-commerce folder. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So here, basically, I'm saying we're copying the stuff inside of that folder into that folder in the WW folder. So in my WW folder, I've got, I've got a folder with that date. Now in the previous days that we've been here, we've had a folder in the WW folder called what? WordPress. WordPress. So let's change the name of this folder to simply say WordPress. So instead of that old name, we're going to load it up with this new name. Just change the name of that folder to say WordPress. And in that WordPress folder is this installer file and the zip file. Again, we won't do anything with these files. Don't double click anything. Don't, don't extract anything. We just need to make sure that those archive files from last week are in our, are in our folder. Number five, in your web browser, access the installer PHP file go to localhost slash new site slash installer. You should note something there. Let's go to the folder, uh, the web browser. So localhost slash WordPress slash installer dot PHP. You might say, well, doesn't your instructions don't your instructions say new site? Why am I not why am I not typing new site? There's no such folder in the WW folder called new site. There's a folder in there called WordPress. So you see, whatever you type in the address of the web browser needs to be in your folder. If I had a folder in my WW folder called new site, then I would type new site. Because I've got a, a, a folder in here called WordPress, and if I want more than one more than one site, I cannot call each site WordPress. Windows won't let me name two folders called WordPress. The Mac won't let me name two file two folders <laughs> called WordPress. They have to have a unique name. So it doesn't matter the name of this folder, but I'm just showing you. My instructions say go to new site, but we're going to WordPress because we have a folder called WordPress. And if it works, then you'll see this screen here. You'll see this duplicator installer screen. So does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Question? No, I don't think that's the duplicator. I read in the WordPress file. I mean, WordPress, uh, no, we'll publish the PHP model.
All right, so on this screen here, this is the installer file. Uh, you go to this address right here. So this is the installer screen where um, we need to say, okay, we've got this archive and we need to connect it with the database we just created. And the, you may think, well, this sounds exactly like day one and day two where we were creating a brand new site. No. This is recreating a site, redeploying, resurrecting a site. We just need to connect it to a, a willing, a ready, willing, enabled database. So we created a database a moment ago, and on this screen here now, our files are in the WW folder, the requirements have passed, action, create new database, or connect and remove all data. In our case, either of these will work just fine, so leave that. Host is localhost again. Name, new or existing database name. What did we call our database 10 seconds ago? WordPress. WordPress. User, valid database username. Well, if you check my notes, it tells you what that is. Or it should. You will be asked to fill in server path, password login, and database. Okay, so because these instructions, this is my challenge with instructions. I can show you exact instructions step by step for this room. And then when you go home, they will be different because it's your computer. And then they will be different also when you're on your own GoDaddy server. Well, I didn't fill in what the password and uh, password and login is here, so you write this down. And this comes from actually a previous instruction, so we've seen this before. But the user to connect to the database is root. Remember that when we created the database on day one and day two. And the password is nothing, is empty. Remember that? Click test connection. And I get success. If you didn't get success, let's try to fix your problem. But a couple of things that could be happening are, well, you didn't create a database. You're not using the username and password that I'm saying right here. Maybe you're not even running WAMP. So did everyone get success? So if we've had success, we will proceed in just a moment.
So as I said, maybe the first couple of times this is complicated because it's the first times, but then as you do it a few more times it becomes relatively easy. And really, I show you this because this is one of the most useful things that I can tell anyone that uses WordPress. This software, Duplicator, makes a perfect copy of your site. And yes, it needs a little bit of tweaking, but then when it works, we get a perfect copy of our site from last week. I've used this plugin uh, for migrating someone's site from one server that they hated to another server that they just bought and I use duplicator to copy it from that server to this server using this same sort of process on their own server instead of host I would have to type you know bluehost.com and type in their name of their user and their password and all of that so it does need a little bit of setup but then it works just great and again there are other plugins out there that might do this faster there's one that I, that I keep telling myself I need to do more research on this. There's only so many hours in the day. There's this other plugin that I've seen that seems to make a copy and then also save itself automatically to my Dropbox. That sounds pretty useful. That way I've got a copy of it in Dropbox. But again, there's so many hours in the day that uh, sometimes things don't get done. So uh, my testing here says everything's successful. Down here you want to click, I read all the warnings, and what that's telling you, warnings, that sounds scary. Honestly, it is scary. What this is telling you is, if you already have a site that exists, and you're connecting to the same database of this site that already exists, you're about to resurrect the site on top of it. So if you're not careful, you might overwrite an existing site 
that already exists. That's why it has it has you say, you know, I've read these warnings. Disclaimer, the plugin requires above average technical knowledge, blah, blah, blah. Always test this installer in a sandbox environment. Okay, that's not so scary. Uh, notice he, it's a lot of paragraphs to read. But what it's telling you is you will, if there is a database that already has a WordPress site, this could erase your database and put a brand new site. Not really brand new, but a copy of it from a previous time. So it's just telling you, be careful about that. In our case, we're fine. We're working with a testing site. We're working on WAMP server. There's no, the stakes are not high at all here. But when you're on your own real site, think about what you're doing step by step. Don't just follow instructions blindly, because sometimes that causes problems. Think about how the instructions apply to your own purposes. Question? What is your uh, username, password, and your different um, site name? Yes, they would. If you've got a different name of a database and a different password and such, then no problem. This is just telling you, in case, it's not smart enough really at this point to tell you it already exists. So you just have to be careful what database and username you're using. Okay, so we've read the warnings and I've told you in our cases the stakes aren't so high, but you have to be aware of it in the future. Click Run Deployment on the bottom right. It's going to warn you one more time. Warning, be sure these database parameters are correct. Entering the wrong information will overwrite an existing database. And software like database, uh, software like WordPress lives on a database. OK. It's going to process it. And then internally, what's happening is the zip file is getting unzipped. Every file is getting put into the right folder. The database is being recreated and being connected. And then eventually, we've got step two. Hopefully there's no, nothing popping up that says warning or error, but everything here is just telling you. Imagine I was taking this from a GoDaddy site, the old settings, to a Bluehost site. It would say, you're coming from victor.com on GoDaddy, and you're going to victor.org on Bluehost. That's, just that, that's what that's telling you. And here, if you'd like, you can change the name of your site. So since everyone's using my site right now, it's called Victor's Bakery. Makes sense. You're all using my backup. If you would like, you can change that name if you want. And notice, a little advanced, you can also create a brand new administrator account. We're going to use my administrator account, and I'm going to give you my password in a moment, but if you'd like to create one, you can create one here. This has been useful for people that come to my class that say, uh, I inherited a website, but I, I can't get to their login information and such. Well. We make a copy of it with Duplicator, we resurrect it like this, and then at this point it's asking, make a new account. And those people have been able to get back into a, a, a site that was previously locked out to them. So it's a very powerful plugin. We're not going to make any changes here really, unless you want to, and click Run Update. That's true. In our case, both URLs are the same because we're just taking it from our WAMP to our WAMP. Last week we were using WAMP, and this week we're using WAMP, so they don't really change. But if we were moving it from server to server, they would change. Yes? So we're still in WAMP? Yeah. Always. In this class. One of those previous warnings that was on there, before you hit run deployment, it said to remove the installer files because they're sensitive. Yeah. Uh, why should we do that? It's right here, actually. So a previous step was telling you something that also happens here. So hopefully we got to this step number three, test site, very important final steps. Did everyone get to this screen here? Okay. Question, yes. The, uh, you know the folder that like, you can say put in the, the folder name new site, mm -hmm. putting two files mm -hmm. that follow the PHP and the zip file. Mm -hmm. And I, I put in a, the new site. Yes, what I said previously was we don't literally want to put new site because new site is the name of a folder that exists in the WAMP cert, in the WAMP folder. We don't have a folder called new site. We have a folder called WordPress. So but why we put a new site inside WordPress? No, we wouldn't put a new site in the WordPress. We would put a new site in the WW folder. So in this folder here we can create a new folder called my site too. And now we're 
and now WAMP server will see that as a new site. So here we've got four steps. Uh, review install report. So no deployment errors, no update errors, no warnings. Sometimes you get errors, sometimes you get warnings. Uh, it hasn't happened that often usually when I do this for real clients, but when it does, there will be some links to hopefully help you fix the problem. So then number two, save permalinks. We'll do that in a moment. Test site. So in theory, this would mean, okay, follow, go to your site, follow every link, check every graphics working, and, and, and test it. Because sometimes, even if you make a perfect copy of it, maybe sometimes things don't quite copy perfectly. And then at the end, security cleanup. Well, we had an installer.php file in our folder, and it's still going to be there a month later. So what could happen is someone could visit the installer.php file, file and uh, re-resurrect re the site. So a month later, after you've worked on your site, someone could resurrect the site back to a month ago, and you lose everything that you did in that month. So that's where the fourth step that we'll do in a little bit is to delete those old installation files. We don't need them anymore. We've got the lot. We've got the site live. Question. Is that it could happen sometimes error if it's an error, you should try to fix it right away. If it's a warning it might not be a big deal. And sometimes what does happen when I work with clients, sometimes there's a warning. So there's a button to click, okay, what does it mean? And I click on it, and then the warning is, is not, that, not that problematic. It's just a warning. And the site works just fine. But errors, definitely, that means there's something wrong. Warnings are, there could be something wrong. Errors, there is something wrong. Are you going to go back to fix it? We should go back to fix it if there are warnings, yes. And it'll hopefully explain there how to fix it. Yes? Could you lock down your installation, your, your files, so that someone can't go in with temp and can't go with it just to visit from one file? You could. You could, uh, you could lock it down, although that might require different uh, sorts of effort. One possible way is to simply move that, those installation files to a, another folder. That's one way. Another way to lock it down, I suppose, is to make a password-protected folder as well. But um, usually we're, we don't want to keep those files hanging around on the server. That's why there is a step four, which will delete them for us. But we've got a copy, for example, hopefully on our flash drive. So that's a copy of our site. And uh, Keeping a copy off offline, you know, on a flash drive or your own computer is always a good strategy. That way you, if anything really goes wrong on your live server, you can always bring it back. But you just don't want to leave those files hanging out on the server. Yes? Victor, uh, so we have several websites. Instead of using WordPress or the database, we just use whatever else we want. That's right. So we need to do, we mm -hmm. A different name for every different site. Okay, and, and, and then for Mac users, uh, localhost would be localhost uh, 8888, something like that, right? Yeah, localhost colon 88848, yeah. And then after that, the name of the site. Question? I wanted to bring this up, but um, I, I guess because I'm new at this, I'm, I'm trying to understand the archiving process we just went through, uh, or trying to go through. Um, are we doing this so that we have in, like, so we have a website with WordPress that we are making a copy of all the information that's on there mm -hmm. now, and and um, and it's so we can um, make changes to that website and through the uh, duplicate. Is that what you were saying? That not not really. The duplicator is is a process to make a copy of your site. That's it. We're in, but we don't make changes to your site with Duplicator. It's oh. just the software to make a copy of your it's site. It's just a copy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's That's nothing, true. it's not a working template, I mean, a working <coughs> site. It's just one that copies what you've got and preserves it. That's an archive. Mm -hmm. 
an archive is just a copy of your site, exactly. It might not be live until you resurrect it, which is what we just did. We brought it back to life. Yeah. But if you want to make changes to the actual website, then you have to go into... Um, dashboard. Dash dashboard. Mm -hmm. Which we'll do very soon, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This The purpose of this software is just to make a copy of your site. So in case something should happen to the computer, you have it on your flash yeah. drive or something? Exactly. But um, the computer would be the server like GoDaddy, and they're getting very good nowadays to make automatic backups for you. Um, so you want to check what your provider, uh, the terms of their service. They might already be making backups for you, and that'd be good. But if not, then you definitely want to make your own backups because they probably have it in their contract somewhere. You know, we have 99.999% uptime, but what about that 0.0001%? And you happen to have bad luck, and you lost everything. They're going to say, well, we did everything we could. You should still have your own backups. This makes a backup. Let's see. So that's really a backup. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I didn't get any problems here, number one. That's good. Number two, save permalinks. Let's click on number two, and that will ask you to log in. That will ask us to log into the WordPress dashboard. Well, we're using my site. If you were using your site, obviously, you would use your username and your password. We're using my site. And this comes straight from like instruction number two or something. My username is admin, and my password is password with a capital P. So obviously I can't show it to you, but this is password with a capital P. The worst username and the worst password possible. I'm sorry, what is that before this one again? Sorry, I clicked on number two, save yeah, permalinks. Yeah. If this were your own site, your own files, then clearly you would log in with your own information. But we're using my site, so it should be admin and password, capital P. Click log in. We saw this screen briefly, maybe on day one. We'll mention it again. This is the uh, notice we're in the permalinks screen in the settings screen. Permalinks is the scheme for you to save your addresses with. The default address has the name of your site and a bunch of numbers, basically the entry in the database. That is not good for SEO. The default WordPress scheme of numbers in your address is not good for SEO. Just about any other one of these is much better. Mine currently says custom structure, with I, which I think is a little weird. Uh, so the one I recommend is post name. So activate post name. And what that does is it gives us our address with the titles of our posts and our pages in the address bar. That's much better for SEO. The search engines are going to rank your site better if your addresses say something like victorsbakery.com slash blog slash how to bake cookies, you know, real words, instead of victor.com slash blog slash 12578. That's meaningless to the search engines. Those words, those keywords that are appearing in my, in my address are coming from the name of the post or the page, and they're being put on our address, our permalink, and the search engines like that. These other ones also work. Just never use default, and I recommend post name. Yes. We can, although it's a little technical to do it. Custom structure is a little technical to do, so if you know how to change your, I mean, if you know what are effective addresses for you to use, URLs, then, then that's why custom is there for you to do it handcrafted. But post name is one of the best ones to choose. Um, so if you make any changes here, you want to click post name and then you want to click save changes. On a normal host like Bluehost and GoDaddy and HostMonster and all of that, you just turn that on save and you're done. All your addresses get updated automatically. Now, unfortunately, there's some kind of quirk in, in WAMP server. I don't think there's a problem in MAMP server. But on WAMP, there's some weird bug 
that if I then were to go to my visit site, don't do this, but if you were to go to visit site and try to visit your pages, they're broken. This is a, you didn't do anything wrong, this is a quirk, like remember this article we wrote, Welcome to Yummy? It's not found. It does exist, it's just that there's a little quirk that we need to fix on WAMP server in a moment. But your stuff, your files are still there. If I put it back to default, again, don't change this. I'm just showing you that if you put it back to how it was default, the files, the stuff is still there. See, there's Welcome to Yummy. There's my sample page. It's, it, they're there. It's just that our permalink structure here, there's a quirk, there's a bug or something inside WAMP server, which we'll fix in just a moment. So you need to make sure you save that. And did you notice duplicator? We were in the duplicator tab and it opened a new tab. So you can close your permalink tab. It goes back to the duplicator tab, the duplicator screen. So we've got number one, we've got number two, number three would be that we go from page to page. I already know there's going to be a problem because of what we did in number two, so I'm not going to bother with actually checking everything on number three. And usually the duplicator plugin makes a perfect copy. I've done this enough times for years to almost assume that it perfectly works. Maybe for your own uh, conscious, you could go in and test to make sure every single thing works. And then once you've done that, you come back here, and now we'll do number four. Let's do number four. This is the screen, this is the, the link that deletes your old installer files from the server. So hopefully you've got a copy of them in your flash drive, because here this says it's going to clean it up, so click OK. And what that does is it took us to our dashboard inside the duplicator panel, inside the tools panel, and uh, here we've got cleanup, delete reserved files, delete legacy data, clear build cache. Just click delete reserved files. You should say great, deleted, not found anymore, you're safe. You don't really need to do anything with these other two. If you are using an old version of the duplicator plugin, I think our current one is 0 0.5. So if you were using like 0 0.4 or 0 0.2, that's outdated, so you can delete that. <clears throat> and then if you're having trouble simply archiving the site, remember we've got archiving and resurrecting. Right now we're resurrecting. At the end of the day, when we archive our site again, when we back it up, and if there's problems, we can clear the build cache, or cache, cache, however you, I never learned how to pronounce it. Uh, you can clear it, and then you'll be able to hopefully avoid problems. Let's close the duplicator tab. We're done with duplicator. We've got our site back. And if you hover over the name of your site and then click Visit Site, our site came back. We have the Canyon theme. We've got a little bit of content. Again, if you try to click on any of these, it will probably say Not Found, and we're going to fix that, then we'll take our break. But my site came back. This is exactly as we left it at the end of the day last week. It's still on WAMP server. It's not live on any real server yet, but it has been brought back from last week. Question? Um, actually, I'm going to leave it behind. We're about to take a break, so I'll catch you up in just a moment. Here's the last thing that we'll do. Here's the last thing that we'll do, which is that our links are broken. We, I thought I put it in my notes somewhere, but maybe I'm not finding it. So make a note here. We need to activate one thing in WAMP server, and then our links will work again. If you're on MAMP server, you don't have to worry about this. If you're on a real GoDaddy, if you're on a real Bluehost, it'll just work. But for some reason, our WAMP server has this quirk. You want to click on the little W of WAMP server in the notification area here. Click on it. Mm -hmm. 
hover over Apache. It's one of the technologies that makes WAMP server work. It's the A in WAMP server, actually. Hover over Apache, and then hover over uh, Apache modules. It's alphabetical, and there's a bunch of features that we can activate for our server. One of the important features that we need is not active. It's called the rewrite module. It's alphabetical, so scroll down to find rewrite module. Rewrite, not request. Rewrite module. So click that. You will see your W become red for a moment, and then orange, and then back to green. You want to go back to your site, and now click your links, and they should work. So again, that was in the W, Apache, Apache modules, rewrite module. So here it is, orange, green, and now if I click on a link, sample page, it worked. It's got the proper address up there, WordPress slash sample page. If I click on a blog post, the address is WordPress. Welcome to Yummy. A moment ago, this was not working because we needed to turn on the rewrite module of WAMP server. On a real server and on MAP server, you don't need to. It's on. So maybe on the next version of WAMP server, that'll be on for us. So at this point, let's take a break. Let's make sure everyone's up to speed. And here we've got our site brought back to life from the exact moment of last week where we don't have to start over. Uh, it's 1.30, let's take a break until 1.40, and then when we come back we'll proceed. <laughs>